In this video we're taking a look at percentage composition so just let's start by taking a look at what it means to calculate the percentage of something. So if we take a look here at the each of the diagrams and we look at the first one here it says what percentage is pink? So out of the total amount that I have I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out of total, uh, eight in total. And out of the eight, what percentage of them are pink? We said there was five pink. So that's kind of the um, proportion of them that are pink. But I want a percent, which means per hundred. So I'm going to multiply that by a hundred. So that's me going to be dividing five by eight, multiplying by a hundred. And I get that the percentage of pink is 62.5%, which is a little more than half, which we would expect based on the diagram. Let's look at the percentage of blues here in this one. So there's one, two, three, four blues out of a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's a total of four out of seven. That's kind of the proportion. Uh, I would like to know the percent, which means multiply by 100. So we're going to have four divided by seven, multiply that by 100, and I'm going to get 57.14. So that's our percentages in general and it's not any different here for what we're going to do when we look at percentage composition of our molecules and for our compounds. So looking at the first one here, we're going to count how much there is in total and we're going to count how much of the thing that we are, we're specifically targeting in on. Last time it was blue versus pink, now it's specific elements. So it says what percentage by mass of chromium is sodium dichromate? So percentage by mass, so they want us use the mass here to calculate the percentage. First thing you'll have to be able to do is you'll have to be able to identify chromium. So chromium is CR and what I notice is that I have two CRs that will be on the top and then I'm going to have on the bottom Na2 so I'm going to have two Na's and two CRs so we count all of them in, in total and then seven oxygens. So to do that then I'm going to need to get each of their masses. So chromium is 52 so I'm going to have 2 by 52 over 2 by sodium which is going to be 23 so 2 by 23 plus 2 by 52 plus 7 by 16. Now if I tidy that up top and bottom what I'm going to have then is 104 on the top and then on the bottom I'm going to have 2 by 23 plus 104 plus 7 by 16 for the oxygens and I get 262 on the bottom. Now that's the proportion, that's how much there is of the chromium out of the total mass but I want a percent so what I'm going to do is multiply it by 100. So we multiply it by 100, we've got 104 divided by 262, multiply that by 100 and I get 39.69%. Uh, or 39.7% if you wish to round. That's all that it is. It's the exact same as that initial question that I had where I had the pink versus the blue circles. Which one, um, you know, they could ask us what the percentage of each of them was. And all you do is you count up how many of the target ones are there. So how many of the pink are there? In this case, the pink actually was the chromium. So how many of the chromium are there out of the total? And it was out of the total mass. Let's look at another one. What is the percentage of mass uh, or percentage by mass of iron in iron three oxide? They're trying to, um, I suppose, connect your knowledge here to oxidation states and the transition metals they might unintentionally be tripping you up by putting that in you might accidentally put the three with the wrong thing so just be careful iron three refers to its oxidation state and the oxidation number that it has in this instance iron is fe so you must know what the symbols for the different elements are and if you don't know them by heart then you need to know where to look them up in the log tables so Fe, we have two Fe's out of a total of two Fe's and three oxygens. Well, if I go to the log tables and I look up Fe in the periodic table, I'm going to have that Fe is 56. So I have two by 56 all over 56 plus three, uh, two by 56 again, apologies, plus three 
by oxygen, which is 16. And I can just put all of that into my calculator in one go. You can do the steps if you like. So I'll have 2 by 56 on the top, 2 by 56 plus 3 by 16 on the bottom. And I get 7 out of 10. And to turn that into a percent, I need to multiply it by 100. So that's the 7 out of 10. I'm going to multiply by 100 and we get 70%. So 70% of that compound uh, is iron. Next one. What is the percentage by mass of nitrogen in ammonium nitrate? Now be careful because the, the nitrogen is N and it exists in two places something that they could use to accidentally trip us up um, or we accidentally trip ourselves up. So the first thing I'm going to note is that I have two nitrogens out of a total of, okay, so I'm going to have two nitrogens, I'm going to have four hydrogens and I'm going to have three oxygens. I'm then going to write out uh, what their masses are. So I'm going to have two by 14 all over two by 14 plus four by H plus three by 16. And then we tidy all that up. On the top, we're going to get 28 all over two by 14 plus four by one plus three by 16. And if I tidy that up, I'm going to have 80 on the bottom and then 28 divided by 80 then, um, multiplied by 100 is what I need to do to get my percentage. So I'm going to do that now and I get 35%. So be careful with that one. They try to catch us out by putting the nitrogen in uh, or giving us a formula with nitrogen in two places. The next one, it's a little bit of a step up here. So it first asks us for the uh, relative molecular mass of eugenol, which is pictured here, which you will remember from your clove oil experiment. So it says calculate the elemental percentage by composition um, of the mass of, of eugenol. So what we'll have to do first is we'll actually have to track how much of each element we have. So for carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So how many carbons do I have? Well, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've got ten carbons. For the hydrogens, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then remember with the benzene, there's one, two, three. Actually, there won't be here. It's here. So let me count that again. Let me mark them in. So there'd be one. There'd be two. That one is used. This one is used. There'd be one here. And this one is used. So let me count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's twelve hydrogens here. Is then going to have a look at the oxygens and we've got two oxygens. Just going to make sure by quickly checking the marking scheme that I've got that right in my count. So I've got 12 by 10, 1 by 12 and 16 by 2. There we go. That's okay. So just make sure that you do count them. How did I know there was ones here? This is benzene and remember all carbon atoms need to have four bonds to them. This carbon here only had one, two, three. So the other one is the hydrogen that's not marked in. So just keep an eye out for sneaky things like that. Then the next thing that we had to do was we were calculating the mass of each uh, compound. Well, to do that first, I need to know the um, relative molecular mass, which they did ask me for in part one. So let me get that out. I'm going to have 10 carbons, which is 10 by 12. Plus, um, I'm going to have 12 hydrogens, which is 12 by 1, plus 2 oxygens which is 2 by 16 and if we total that up we'll see it in the marking scheme here it's 164 so it's 164 and I have three marks in the bag for that part now what I'm going to do is get the percentage of each one so the percentage of carbon so it's going to be 10 by 12 which is how many carbons I have times their molecular mass or their 
atomic mass in this case all over 164 uh, and then multiply that by 100 to get it as a percent so it's going to be 120 divided by 164 multiplied by 100 and I'm going to get 73.17 percent for the next part I'm going to have the percentage hydrogen it's going to be 12 out of 164 12 by 1 out of 164 times 100 to get it as a percent so it's 12 divided by 164 multiply that by 100 and I'm going to get 7.32 percent if I round it correctly and then the last one is the percentage of oxygen and we're going to have 2 by 16 all over 164 times 100 and then it's going to be so 16 by 2 divided by 164 and then times that by 100 and if we've got it right when I add up all of these so 19.51 when I add up all of those we should get a hundred percent so 7.32 and 73.17 so 73.17 uh, I get out a hundred percent. So all of those together do give me a hundred percent. Therefore, I know I've got the answer right. Quick little check that we can do. And if you haven't gone right on that, it's likely you overlooked the hydrogens because they were difficult to count in this one. So the next scenario, calculate the uh, percentage carbon by mass in methyl benzene. So this one is... Um, requiring us to know what methyl benzene looks like. So first you need to be able to draw benzene and then methyl benzene has at the top, instead of a hydrogen, it has CH3. So you need to know what that looks like first in order to be able to draw it, in order to be able to get the percent of the carbon. So what we have is we've got one carbon here two carbons, three carbons, four carbons, five carbons, six carbons, seven carbons, because there's another one on the top. So we're going to have seven carbons out of seven carbons and now let's count the hydrogens. We've got three to begin with, then four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight in total and it's eight hydrogens so then i'm going to have seven by 12 so i'm getting the mass of them so it's percentage by mass so i'm going to have seven by 12 all over seven by 12 plus eight by one and then i just pop that into my calculator so i'm going to have seven by 12 which is equal to 84 and then i'm going to have all over um, 84 plus 8 on the bottom which is 92 and then to get it as a percent what we do is we multiply by 100 so that again that's not even chemistry that's kind of going back to your basic math skills can you find out a percentage and multiply that by 100 and we're going to have 91.3 percent of methyl benzene is made up of carbon so the questions are the same over and over again it's really just down to um, knowing how to draw the compounds if they're not given how to count the number of atoms keep an eye an eye out for any tricks that they may give us and then doing basic percentages so the target mass all over the total mass multiply by a hundred now, it can get a little bit more difficult. Here is an example of such. So it says the use of KBROX as a flower additive has been banned in the EU for many years, but it is sometimes used to bleach flour and the strength of dough in some jurisdictions. KBROX contains 47.9% bromine by mass, find the value of x so basically uh, what we'd be looking for is we'd be looking for um, how many oxygens are there so we know that there is one of the um, one of the potassiums one of the bromines and x amount of oxygens but what we actually know is that if i was to get the bromine 
as a percentage, which is BR, all over K plus BR plus X oxygens. And I multiplied that by 100. If I actually ran through the calculation, I know it would equal to 47.9%. That's what they're telling me. So what I can do is I can uh, set this up as an equation. So I know bromine's mass, because we can get it in the periodic table. Bromine's mass is 80. So we're going to have 80 all over K, which is going to be potassium, which is 39. So 39 plus 80 plus X times 16. Uh, and I, then I'm going to get rid of that 100. And I'm going to get rid of that 100 by dividing both sides by 100. So I'm going to have 47.9 over 100. Now, the last thing to do here, this is just algebra from this point forward. Have a look at it, it's an equation in x, that's all that it actually is. So while the initial setup was chemistry based, that's all done. As soon as you've this done, the chemistry is over and it's now about algebra. So we're going to have 8 all over this. And I don't know what X is, so I'm going to just have, sorry, 80 all over and then 39 plus 80, which is 119. So I've got 80 all over 119 plus 16X. Now, what I'm going to need to do is get rid of some of the calculations here to make more space for myself. So we know where it came from. And I'm going to say that all of this at the bottom there, all of that was equal to 47.9 over 100. So it's equal to 47.9 over 100. Now, how do I get out of this? Well, I'm going to uh, get rid of the fraction by multiplying this side by 100 and multiplying this side by 119 uh, plus 16x. And why am I allowed to do that? Well, this is divide. To get rid of divide, I'm going to multiply. So it's going to be 80 multiplied by 100 is equal to 47.9 multiplied by 119 plus 16x. So that's just math skills. I'm then going to multiply this out. So 80 times 100, I'm going to have 8,000 is equal to 47.9 times 119, which gives us 5,700.1 plus 47.9 times 16. And that gives me 766.4x. To get x on its own, I'm going to subtract that from both sides. So I'm going to have 8,000 take away 5,700.1, which is going to give me 2,999, uh, sorry, 2,299.9. And that's equal to 766.4 times x. X. And then to get x on its own, I'm going to divide both sides by 766.4. And if I do that, I get a value of 3. So 3.0000 and then 9, but it's x is equal to 3. It's going to be a whole number. And that's it. So it seemed like a really daunting question. And even when I looked at that for the first time as a, a teacher and as a chemistry graduate, I kind of went, well, do, do they want me to use empirical formula? And then I had to look at it again. And actually, no, you don't need the empirical formula here. Uh, it's just percentages. So it's just an algebra question. So take your time with it. Percentage composition is quite nice. It's, it's handy. They might have little traps, but it all comes back to, uh, can you set up uh, a percentages question?